everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would film a planning video about planning a wedding. So it's six weeks today until we get married, which I cannot believe, the time is absolutely flying by. I feel like I'm pretty much done now. I've done everything I need to do. So if anything goes wrong, there's not a lot I can do about it now. I feel like we've got everything ready and it's just gonna take its course now and the next six weeks are gonna go so quickly. So with planning a wedding, I feel like there's so much to take in and you don't really know where to start. And I think over the last 18 months, I've kind of picked up a few tips and tricks that I'd really like to share with everybody. So me and John got engaged on in December 2016 uh, on Christmas Day, which was really lovely. I was actually pregnant with Albie at the time and I'd been lulling around in my pyjamas all day and he kept saying to me, will you please just go and get changed? Will you please just go and get ready? And I was like, what's the problem? It's Christmas Day, I'm quite happy in my pyjamas. Anyway, it got to about lunchtime and he was cooking Christmas dinner and I thought, okay, right, I'll go and have a shower and i get myself ready. And most of my family had arrived and I went upstairs and got changed and had shower and did my makeup and everything and put a dress on. Anyway, I came down the stairs and I opened kind of the living room doors and um, my family were all sat around and my mum was like, oh, you look amazing. And I was like, oh, thanks, mum. And then John kind of said like, oh, you look gorgeous. And then he got down on one knee and proposed. So it was lovely. It was really nice to have it on Christmas Day. It's my favourite day of the year. And every Christmas we're going to be like, oh, do you remember when we got engaged? Oh, do you remember that year? And it was lovely having my family there as well. It made it really, really special. Um, so yeah, so we, got we got engaged in the December and then in the January, we decided to start thinking about the wedding really, just getting some ideas and thinking about things. So I've written down a little list of what I think will help people when they get engaged and when they're planning a wedding. And my first tip is to think and buy wedding magazines. So I didn't actually do this straight away and I really wish I had. Wedding magazines are amazing. They give you like really good tips for the day, tips of how to plan, lots of like ideas on dresses and table decorations and flowers and venues. They talk about everything. And I think to have something physical that you could cut things out and make a little mood board with or just flick through and think, oh, I like that idea. Oh, that's a really good tip to have. I really think they are so good. I've got an example here today and this is just called Brides. It's a really lovely magazine. It's quite thick. There's a huge amount to take in, but just to have and to get you excited, I think looking through wedding magazines is really, really important. My next tip is to visit lots of venues. So when we first kind of got engaged and started thinking about what, where we wanted to get married, we initially thought about getting married in a teepee. So we were looking at plots of land, to hire, we were looking at the cost of hiring a teepee, and in the end, we decided it was just gonna be a little bit too stressful for what we wanted. Um, I really didn't like the idea of kind of on the day, having to go and set things up and make sure that everything's arrived and you have to really think about the weather to have a teepee wedding, because obviously, really, you want to be outside as much as possible. And with England, we know what it's like. You just can't guarantee it, can you? So we we just found it, it was gonna be a little bit too stressful for what we wanted. So then we decided to look at wedding venues. And this was, I don't know. I It's almost like looking at houses. Like it was really quite like, I don't know, not stressful. It was exciting, but you didn't want to pick somewhere that you didn't absolutely love. So I think in the end we actually saw six different venues, everything from kind of hotels to um, houses to barns, which, which we're actually getting married in. We're getting married at King's Coat Barn. I'll leave a little link down below. It's absolutely beautiful. And everything we went to see, we were just like, no, it's not right. No, I, we wanted somewhere that had accommodation because we've got family that need to travel up to see us. So we knew we wanted somewhere with accommodation. 
um, which is why we initially thought kind of a hotel. We thought oh, if we had a nice hotel, then everyone can stay and we don't need to worry about that. We looked at a couple of castles, <laughs> as you do, um, and that was just not our kind of vibe at all. Like it was way too over the top. It's not really me and John. I mean, th the weddings look incredible, but as a couple, it's not really us. So we did go and look at a few different venues and then when we came to Kingscote, and I'm not even joking, before we even walked in, we were like driving down the drive and it's like, it's based in a farm. So there's like sheep absolutely everywhere and it's just field upon field upon field. But as you're driving down your drive, you can just see this barn right at the bottom. And I was like, John, I really, really like this. And he was like, yeah, I really like it. Let's see what it's like. Anyway, we went in, I think it was the end of January. So we'd only been engaged like what, four weeks. Um, and funny enough, for the end of January, it was like a beautiful, crisp, sunny day. And we were like, oh my God, this is amazing. Sh sh looked around it and we instantly knew like that was the one. And then it was like, oh my goodness, like, let's see if they can get us in. We knew we didn't want to get married that year. Obviously I was like pregnant. Uh, we knew um, Albie was going to be born end of May, June. Um, time so we knew it couldn't be that year because I then wanted to obviously lose the baby weight so we were aiming for um the summer 2018 or the autumn 2018 because I actually really love autumn weddings I think they look beautiful like I love the colors in autumn like the trees and the leaves and for me, I just think it looks beautiful having an autumn wedding. I love those kind of colours. So we're like, oh, please, can you, let's have a look at your dates. Anyway, she was like, we haven't got anything. I was like, oh no, what are we going to do? She said, we got nothing for 2018 on a Saturday or Sunday. And we're like, okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, like, okay, we could maybe wait a year. And I was thinking, I don't really want to wait another year. Like, I'll be at the wedding will be a year old, Arthur will be three. I don't really wanna to have to wait another year and another year of planning just to get married. So I kind of was a bit like, okay, that's fine, whatever. It's not meant to be kind of thing. And then John, for whatever reason, just said, oh, what about Fridays? And then she was like, oh, I'll just go and have a little look. And she went off into her little office, looked at her schedule and she was like, oh, we have actually got one Friday left in June. And I was like, yeah, like, let's take it. Let's do it. Let's sign up right now. So we kind of put the deposit down there and then, and we knew from January 2017 that we would be getting married in June 2018. So we knew we had a long time to plan, which is great. You need a long time to plan, if I'm honest. And then we knew the date, we knew where we were getting married. And I kind of feel like once you know that, everything else doesn't really matter that much. Well, for us anyway. We just wanted to know that we had the venue and that we had the date. And then we could kind of relax a little bit. So my next kind of like port of call, if you like, was to find a lady that could do our stationery. Now I'm like massive on wedding stationery. For me, it was a really exciting part of the whole wedding planning was actually designing the wedding stationery. A lot of people, they're not into it and they just buy things online and that's absolutely fine. Like it's, it's down to you and it's down to what you like to do. But I love wedding stationery. I wanted to make it really, really personal. And for me, it just, Oh, I just loved it. I worked with the most incredible stationary lady. She's called Emmy Designs. I'll link her below. She was phenomenal, like from day dot. She kind of just knew what we wanted. Um, and she was just amazing. So we started off with our save the dates. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a separate video where I kind of go through maybe like a wedding haul and I'll talk you through our um, our stationery. I maybe show you the boys outfits, what they're wearing. I'll show you my bridesmaids outfits. Um, any little bits that we've kind of bought for the wedding, I think I'm gonna do that in a separate haul. So I will show you the wedding stationery, but just not today, I haven't got it with me. But 
Oh my goodness, she was absolutely amazing. So we did her kind of bespoke stationery where we talked through what we kind of wanted and she came back with about three or four different designs. Um, then we picked one, changed a few little bits, went back and forth a few times and then we picked it and was like, yep, that's the one. So I think we sent out our save the dates in March 2017. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. So they had a good like 14, 15 months to know the date, to be able to book it off work. Because obviously Sorry, being- That was just John. <laughs> He's like, oh, are you on the phone? I was like, no, just trying to film a video, but whatever. Um, so what I was saying is, Oh yeah, so obviously with the wedding being on a Friday, people have had to book it off work, which is a bit of a pain, um, but it's really lovely that everyone has done that. So so they've got a good 14 months to kind of book it off work. And then, so the save the dates went out in the March time. And then the next, like there's a bit, bit of a kind of a lull and everything. You don't really have to think about much after that. Once you've kind of booked your, your wedding venue and you've got the date and you've booked the save the dates, you then don't have to worry too much about anything else for a good couple of months really. I then did end up speaking with the caterers. So when we booked Kingscote Barn, we knew we had a choice of three caterers. Um, that's kind of how it works there. I think that's quite a common thing where you have to pick out of their three caterers. We couldn't pick our own, which was fine. They're actually incredible caterers, so we've not got a lot to worry about there. We arranged to go and see them, and then we kind of went through a few menu ideas with them and then did a tasting which is incredible like all you've got i was i was pregnant turning up just trying loads and loads of different food i mean it was a dream day it was amazing so we did that in maybe the april or may time i think it was april time march april yeah about april time we did a tasting then came up with the final menu and then that was it then, that's all we did for the first, in the first kind of year basically, we, that's all we did. We just booked the venue, sent out the save the dates, spoke with the caterers and that was it. Now my, another tip I definitely have is Pinterest. Pinterest is amazing, it's a bit addictive. So just beware of that. You're going to end up spending hours and hours scrolling through Pinterest. But the ideas they have on there is amazing. I've got a board for wedding dresses, bridesmaid dresses, table settings, flowers, lighting. I've got I've got Pinterest for abs Pinterest board for absolutely everything and I love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant for getting ideas and just making a little scrapbook but online. It's fantastic and I don't think you can ever look at Pinterest enough when you're planning a wedding. It's just absolutely fantastic. So that would definitely be a tip of mine is to get some ideas on Pinterest on how you want to decorate your venue, barn, hotel, whatever you decide to go for. Um, because at the end of the day you want to make it look special. I would say mine and John's priorities, and every couple is completely different, would have been venue. That for us was like a big one. We wanted to make sure that we loved our venue. Two was always going to be food because we are such foodies. And I think everyone that's coming to our wedding knows that we're foodies. So I'm not saying there's like pressure because of that, but they know we would like to put on a good meal for everybody and we were excited to do that so they were kind of our two priorities and after that that was it like I was not into the whole dress thing I have found a beautiful dress that I absolutely love but for me it wasn't a priority um I think as well because I was pregnant I don't know. I I wasn't really in that frame of mind. I knew at that I knew at that point when we got engaged, I couldn't go and try on dresses. I knew that it was going to be a good. I think the first dress I tried on was in the October, so a good ten months after we got engaged, that I even tried on a dress. So for me, it was not the priority, and 
that's just kind of the way I am. But we definitely wanted to have good food and definitely wanted to have a good venue. So once we'd done that, we had a, had a bit of a break from everything. I think before Albie was born in the June, we went up to Kingscote because they did a bit of a wedding fair, which if you can go to a wedding fair at your venue, I would highly recommend it because they kind of set the venue up how it would look for a wedding. So firstly, that gives you an idea of how things are gonna look on the day. Secondly, they obviously have a huge amount of suppliers there. You've got your caterers there, you've got people that do flowers, you've got photographers, you've got videographers, you've got everybody there. And it's quite nice having everyone, in, it's a bit overwhelming to begin with, having everyone in the same place. And you could kind of go, yes, 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 to absolutely everybody, because it all looks so incredible. But it's a really good idea if you can go to a wedding venue at your, um, a wedding fair at your wedding venue, I would recommend it. I think it's a really good idea. And while we were there, we walked up to this table and this lady had kind of set out the most beautiful table I could ever imagine. And at first I was, I didn't really, I didn't kind of get it. I was just chatting away to her and I was like, oh my goodness, this looks so beautiful. And she went on to tell me that that is what she does. She's a wedding stylist. So she goes to weddings every single day and she sets up everything for them. So she does the tables, the, um, the bunting, the flowers, she doesn't provide the flowers, but she sets up the flowers, how it's gonna look. She does the lighting, she puts out any kind of signs you want for um, kind of your table plan or your name settings. She does the whole thing. So she decorates the venue from start to finish. And I was like, oh my God, I had my mum with me and I was like, mum, mum, look at this, look what she does, like this is amazing. And she was such a lovely lady that she's not a salesman at all. You just talk to her and you just wanna be her best friend, like she's just amazing. So I was like, I definitely want to book you. And I didn't know how much it was gonna be. Um, and John wasn't there, so I was kind of a bit like, yeah, let, let, let's book you now, let's do it. John's not here. Um, but actually, she is so reasonable. Her name is Lara Dana, and she runs a company called Wedding Creations. I'll link her down below again. And she is phenomenal. So I think we paid £450, but that includes everything. So she brings all the props. She's there the whole day to kind of move anything about that you need, um, set anything up that you need that maybe, because we're planning to have an outdoor wedding, but obviously it depends on the day. So if we do have to have it indoors, she'll set it up for an indoor wedding. Then once we're kind of in the reception area having a little drink, she then comes in and sets it up for the meal. Um, she does all the decorations, all the lighting, all the bunting, all of the table plans. It's gonna be amazing. And for me, I just think it is so worth the money. If you went out and decided that you wanted to buy, I don't know, we've got nine tables, so you wanted to buy a one to nine, um, I don't know, we're not actually doing this, we can't, we're having like um, a little, like a little stand that just has a number one on it, but I know quite a lot of people like the idea of having a photo frame with like a, with a, with a number inside of it. So say you went out and bought nine photo frames for 10 pounds, that's 90 pounds gone. That's before you've bought like the meters and meters of bunting that you need. That's before you've bought all the candles. And also the fact that we don't have to do anything. Like she turns up on the day and decorates everything. I had to go to Kingscote the other day for a meeting and there was this couple of guys, they were obviously the ushers or best men or something, and they were setting up and they were flapping around like you would not believe. They had their list of things they had to do. You could tell, like they weren't comfortable with it. They knew they wanted to do their best for the bride and groom, but it is stressful setting up a wedding. Like there's so much to think about and there's such limited time. Like obviously we're getting married at two o'clock in the afternoon, but say you can't get to the wedding until 
wedding venue until maybe 10 o'clock in the morning, you've only got four hours to make it look perfect. And Lara Dana is amazing. Like she's gonna run around and get everything ready for us and she's worth every single penny and I cannot wait to see what she's gonna do for us on the day. Um, she's kind of sent me through a little lookbook to look at and it just looks incredible. I am so happy. And I would say out of anything we've booked, she's probably one of the best bit of money we've spent. Like she's just amazing. <clears throat> so the next thing we thought about was photographers. Now this is so difficult, like, oh my goodness. There's such different styles of photography for weddings. I would suggest maybe just meeting with two or three different photographers. That's what we did. And they kind of show you through your um, their, pro their profiles of different weddings that they've done. And you, you, will, you will know, like you will meet with someone and you'll go, yeah, he's the one. And we've got a man called Tom doing our wedding. He actually did a friend of mine as well, which does help because when you've seen um, pictures from your friend who's got married and he's the photographer and then you've seen his kind of profile of all the other weddings he's done, um, you do just know and he makes us feel so relaxed he's put us at ease completely we had to do a kind of pre-wedding photo shoot with him a couple of weeks ago which for me and John was just our complete and utter hell like John hates having his picture taken I don't mind it as much but it's a different kind of oh, experience when you're having your picture taken um, in like a, a kind of formal way I suppose like when I'm just out and about and taking pictures of me and the kids and taking selfies and everything like it's fine like I don't mind any of that or if I'm at a party or whatever and I'm taking pictures like that's fine um, but actually when you've got to stand there in like poses well, they're not really poses like basically he gave us three poses like to stand in different ways I might insert some pictures now actually because they are really really beautiful what he's done I'm really really happy with them but it was a little bit awkward no the thought of it was quite awkward but when he was here honestly he just put us at ease completely and utterly and it wasn't at all kind of awkward or stressful at all um and I'm glad that we did it because I now know what to expect on the day and I he now knows what to expect from us on the day and hopefully that combination we will get perfect beautiful natural which is like key for us wedding photos and I'm excited actually like he was such a lovely guy and he kind of said he just sinks into the background but says hello to everybody lets them know who he is and he says through doing that he can build up a bit of a, a relationship with people and they don't feel awkward when he's around and he just snaps away and gets the shots that he wants and people aren't like who's that man standing over there with the camera and pointing it at me Whereas if they know it's Tom and that's kind of his job for the day and he's just going to be hanging around and doing his own thing, people feel much more relaxed. So really, really happy about that. Once we booked the photographer, we then did decide to book a videographer, which John even now is still not sure on. But I am so excited and I'm so glad we've booked one because... I just feel I will watch it all the time. Obviously, we will have like pictures up around the house of the wedding, probably. I'd imagine so. I don't really know. We haven't obviously got them yet. But I'd imagine we'd put together an album and then have a few shots around the house. But I do honestly believe that I will watch the video over and over again, even if it's just on our anniversary or when we've got friends round or if we're just reminiscing on the day like I know I will watch it a lot and especially with the boys like obviously because they're going to be there on our wedding day it'll be nice for them when they get older to watch themselves back running around having fun and to know that they were like a huge part of our day as well so I I'm really excited to have a videographer and that was kind of our last thing that we did for a while 
I then started trying on dresses in the October, so like 10 months before the wedding. And I just, oh, I just didn't find the whole, I just, I didn't really enjoy it, if I'm honest. Like, it's, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really the type of person that is like, oh, it's all about me. Like, I can't wait to get in my wedding dress and walk down the aisle and it's all about me. And I don't know, I found it very overwhelming. I kind of just wanted someone to go, do you know what, Steph, like, there's, there's your wedding dress take it home like that's it that would have been perfect for me but it's not the way it works like you I had to try on a huge amount of dresses and yeah it was fun like I had my bridesmaids there and my mum and we all had a glass of champagne and it was like it was really exciting but the stress of actually finding a dress just not for me I just didn't I just didn't enjoy it I found it really stressful um I did a lot of research on Pinterest I kind of wish I'd done a little bit more research maybe um because the trouble is you don't know what style you want there are so many different styles of wedding dresses it's it's really difficult but I am a believer and I still say it now when I tried my wedding dress on I did know that was it that was the one um, and I, I love my wedding dress. I'm so happy with it. I cannot wait to put it on again. Every time I put it on, I feel so special. Um, but for me, that whole experience just wasn't great. <laughs> just, I just didn't really like it. It just wasn't for me. So the other thing I've put down as like a tip is to think about numbers quite early on. So obviously before you send out your save the dates, you need to think about the number of people you're gonna have there. And it's quite difficult putting together a guest list, I'm gonna be honest, like, oh, it's just, it's we're, we, we've got 80 people and I feel like that's kind of a, a small, medium kind of wedding. Like it's certainly not a big amount of people at all. And for that, for us, that was perfect. Like we knew we wanted just everyone that we love and know in one room. I didn't want anyone there that I've never met before. I didn't want anyone there that I haven't seen for a long time. Like that's just not us. Um, we're actually not doing evening guests either. So our wedding guests are there for the whole day and the whole evening. Because again, we haven't got kind of people that we know that we'd like to be there, but not know enough that we don't want them there the whole day. So for us, that just wasn't gonna be an option. But I would think about your guest list quite early on and decide exactly who you want to be there because it's quite difficult and it's just one thing that you need to get right and know that you've sent out your save to dates and that's it then. There's no going back, you don't have to change it, that's it. But I think once you've sent those out and everyone's got them and you've done all the little bits, that's when everything just becomes really easy and really exciting. Once I found my dress, which was in the January this year, so 2018, I then fully relaxed like honestly it was such a weight of my mind once I found that dress it was just oh my goodness I just I was glad that it was done then um they need quite a while to kind of make the dress so I picked up the dress beginning of May is that right no beginning of April it was so they had January February March April they had four months to make it and then I've been having a month of kind of fittings try-ons making sure it's perfect I've had one today and then I've got another one in two weeks and then that's it then um I'll pick it up and take it home so it's oh, it's quite a lengthy process but obviously it will completely be worth it um and I'm really excited um the bit that I did really enjoy was actually buying wedding shoes like that for me I am a shoe girl not as much as I used to be I used to be love shoes like I used to buy shoes all the time but since having children like it's just not the same anymore um but I found it really exciting picking my shoes I'll show those in my haul as well actually because they are so beautiful I absolutely love them um and you do once you've picked your dress you do need to find your shoes and know that they're gonna go with your dress and then when you go to try it on for the first time once it's kind of yours and it's been made for you, um, 
you need your shoes because obviously then they will make sure the hem's the right height and things like that and you're happy that everything goes together so shoes are really good um jewelry wise i am wearing a pearl necklace that was my mum's well is my mum's it's a beautiful necklace um i absolutely love it so once i kind of knew i was gonna wear a pearl necklace john's parents very kindly have bought me some pearl earrings so they all look really lovely and i'm really really excited about those but that's kind of it that's all the jewelry i'm wearing is just a nice pearl necklace nice pearl earrings and that's it um we have booked a hairstylist which we didn't think we were going to need one and i was like no no it's fine like i will do my own hair like the girls can do their own hair like it'll be absolutely fine um the, my bridesmaids have decided they want their hair up which then made us realize that we needed a hairdresser <laughs> we kind of i had them around a few weeks ago and we were like right yep yeah, let's do the hairstyle and honestly oh my goodness they looked so awful like i so awful we then realized that we needed a hairdresser <laughs> like it didn't matter about the money we needed a hairdresser we were terrible like i thought i'm all right at hair but no like it was absolutely awful so we've booked a hairdresser which is nice so we've got a hair trial at the end of may and then she will be there obviously in the morning on the day and do all of our hair so that's another thing that i don't really need to worry about i definitely don't want a makeup artist i i like the way i do my makeup i'm quite particular about it i don't wear heavy makeup like even today all i've got on is a little bit of concealer that's it like that's that's kind of my day-to-day -day makeup so for me i'm probably gonna wear a I don't think I'm even going to wear foundation, you know. I'm probably just going to wear, like, a nice tinted moisturiser and a concealer and that's it. Like, that's that's kind of me. That's... I want to look natural and I don't want to look over the top because that's just not the way I am. So, I am going to do my own makeup, but I've now got a lady to do my hair, which is amazing. That's great. And I'm just trying to think what else. Oh, booze-wise... Obviously, John works for a brewery, doesn't he? So we were always going to be able to hopefully get our booze done through him, which we are, which is great. So we get like a bit of a discount, which is amazing. So we're kind of doing our own booze ourselves. Um, and that's going to be exciting. It's been really nice, like kind of picking out drinks we're going to have. And when everyone arrives, we're going to do like some gin and tonics and um, some pims and things like that. Um, so that's really excited. Oh, I have just thought of one other thing. When you've booked your wedding venue, you should really go and book your registrar. Apparently they get booked up really quickly. I mean, we did it like the week we booked it, we just booked a registrar straight away and that was fine. Um, but apparently they do get booked up quite quickly. So if you can, I book it as soon as possible. Um, that's obviously if you're getting married at a venue and having the ceremony at the venue. Obviously if you're getting married in the church, there's a whole different ball game i know nothing about it so i can't really help with that but booking your registrar is really important you then have to go in and book notice where they kind of talk you through all different questions about um oh, i can't even remember now like just making sure you knew each other and um you were happy and i don't know i think it's like a legal thing just to make sure that you're not kind of getting married for the wrong reason and things like that so you have to do all of that so yeah i would book your um your registrar as soon as you possibly can and then it's just all the fun stuff like um buying your like little bits like buying your um guest book and we're not actually having confetti because we we're not allowed confetti at the venue which is a little bit annoying but it's on a farm like i understand that you're not allowed confetti so it was like we actually have bubbles so i had to buy the bubbles and um we've booked some balloons to have at the venue and it's like all the really good fun stuff that i've really really enjoyed um designing the invitation with our stationary lady like oh my god i just absolutely loved that like that was just so much fun um so sending out invitations which we sent out in february this year i think that's right yeah february this year um so kind of four months before the wedding we sent out the um invitations which was really lovely um 
yeah, I think that's kind of everything that I wanted to talk about and I hope that's helped anyone who is planning getting married. It is so exciting and I literally can't wait now, but I, I hope my tips have helped a few people out there and have fun, enjoy it, because hopefully you're only going to do it once and just make the most of it. So um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I will see you again next Friday. Please subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Bye.